uh, come up with uh, a, a, a new set of protocols, which uh, we'll go over uh, during, uh, during the program. Uh, I'm, I might ask that uh, if you don't have a um, so pencil or pen or some paper nearby, if you would uh, uh, grab onto that at this point, so you can uh, a couple of places where you might want to take some notes. Uh, but uh, pretty much you'll be provided with this paperwork uh, from when you get out there. I would just like to thank Sharon for all the work that she's done on on uh, totally revising the uh, from the standard operating procedures and the data sheets. Um, She's done a phenomenal job, and I can't thank you enough, Sharon, for <laughs> for all the time and effort that you put into this. So, yep. You seeing that on your screens? <laughs> yep, we're good. Okay. Very good. Okay, I'm gonna hide the thumbnail here. Yep. Okay. Uh, these are our. Um, yep. Uh, here's the statement of the problem. And okay. <laughs> uh, as you know, those uh, those are the partners that we've had involved. Um, they're the people that uh, we have on the list. Um, of um, we've had two new people, or several new people that we have. Uh, Patrick Lynch. Um, who is the author of um, the Long Island Sound uh, Guide that uh, we're using as our reference uh, is going to be with us. Um, he, uh, he also uh, has just purchased a drone. So he is going to be able to work with, um, with Scott on, uh, on doing the, uh, uh, the drone of, um, uh, videos and, and photography and so forth. And then of course there's Derek, uh, Sharon and Diana. Um, we just uh, talk, I got an email message from uh, Stephanie Collette uh, this morning. Uh, she is not going to be able to be with us, unfortunately. Uh, both she and her husband um, have been experiencing some uh, very bad health, health issues. And um, uh, she sent me that message from the ER this morning. So uh, my prayers are gonna be with her and, and her husband that uh, they make it through this. Uh, this, this terrible time and yep. uh, statement of the problem sea level rise 20 inches that's a little bit less than uh, two feet by uh, 2050 six feet by 2100 so keep that in mind when you're um, out there in the fields and uh, trying to visualize uh, what that area that you're uh, that you're working in is is uh, is going to look like and you know uh, how much the uh, the new marshland habitat is going to be changed for birds, insects, wildlife, forage, fish, and so forth, and what they need to survive. So, next, uh, here's the information from Dave Kozak on the sea level rise. Uh, basically, the green is as low marsh, um, uh, high marsh uh, from the brown. And uh, a tidal flat, meaning basically mud flats, by 2100. And if you look at that, uh, as, 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 as the sea level rises and uh, the tide level rises, uh, all that brown is basically going to be mud flats at that point. So, next slide. Purpose of the studies uh, to examine vegetation changes within and at the edges of the coastal marsh, and then to examine the responses of animal populations to these changes. Next slide. Um, why are we doing this? Again, it's uh, the, the, the SLAM model, which um, uh, was created uh, for, for, uh, for Connecticut Sea Grant. Um, uh, through a grant, uh, which uh, Dave, uh, Dave Kozak was able to get, um, and uh, we're, we're uh, we need to do the, do the field observations to see, you know, how the plant and animal communities uh, change um, over the expanded extended period of time for as long as we can for up to eighty years. So, 
kind of a long-term project. Next. Uh, this is the area in which we are doing our work and the red line here um, is basically the area in the marsh. The line goes out from, from, from actually uh, um, uh, near where the water level is there all the way back up into the, into the woodlands. So, um, just picture what this will be by 2100. And, and the tidal marsh, marsh ecology. Uh, you're all familiar with uh, with this. Uh, the newcomers aren't with us, so I don't need to go through this much. Spend much time with you. But uh, when when Susie uses it with the other students that uh, she has coming along, you know, if, uh, it'll be uh, it'll be helpful for uh, um, for them to view what uh, you know, what what the di different elements are of uh, the typical marsh. So next slide. We need to keep in mind all of the interactions and interrelationships that make up the ecology of the marsh. Uh, it's the atmosphere, the lithosphere, and all the elements of the biosphere. And next slide, please. This is all how it's tied together um, with uh, the marsh at the bottom, the water, the submerged vegetation, and what that contributes to being the, the growth of and, and development and spread of the populations of these organisms, which are uh, very important. Uh, yeah, at the bottom, the forage fish, which are feeding the birds, and also uh, the owls and um, and, uh, and so forth. So it's uh, this network for all of the cycles in nature that we need to keep in mind. Uh, this is the inside of the barn, and uh, you'll notice that I've uh, um, modified uh, the organization that uh, we had last year, and I've divided uh, divided up into sectors. Uh, sector A represents uh, the 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 aquatic studies uh, group, which uh, from uh, from Susie has. Um, um, uh, did uh, with the you know in the in, in the creek at the end of at the very end and then over off the dock that's uh, more out towards the in open water part uh, so, uh, so, uh, actually uh, from uh, so station two um, actually there will be another one in between there which will be uh, from uh, for the birds and then there's uh, sector one and sector two and sector three, um, and then uh, for, uh, four for for, for you know for the uh, uh, for the drones and so forth. So, and and this is where uh, basically uh, Sharon and I will keep all our paperwork and microscope, etc. Uh, the process for uh, determining all of these uh, changes is the line transect quadrant sampling. And that's the basic document uh, that, uh, in the two documents that show that. Um, the first one kind of comes from uh, basically, uh, from, from, oh, you, can, you can go ahead and roll it over, please. Next slide. It's the basic document which uh, Chris Elpick and Chris Field uh, put together with uh, Beth Lawrence and it kind of uh, shows what a line transect is, but it uh, gives the basic protocols to be followed. The other document which is in there is actually a document from uh, from a Long Island Sound study and, uh, and uh, what they're uh, you know, for, uh, proposing in this, uh, is the Sentinels of um, uh, the, the plants and the animals and so forth uh, that uh, we should be looking for to be indicators of change in the marsh. Next slide, please. Uh, what is line transect and why is it used? Um, you're all familiar with uh, um, it's basically used to determine the location and distribution of plant and animal species, 100 meter measuring tape, 
one meter square quadrants, which um, I'll show the progression in a later slide. Um, and what we're doing is uh, uh, determining uh, what are the plants and the animals that are living there and their relative abundance. And there are basically 32 quadrants uh, and sites along this line. And we're doing it in the fall and in the spring. This obviously is the springtime session. And why we are doing it uh, to observe the seasonal changes in the populations uh, that occur over the long duration of the entire, entire studies here. So, yeah, please. <clears throat> Uh, this pretty much explains what it's all about, uh, enabling research team to determine how much and how fast the marsh habitat is migrating to into upland areas and um, how much of that area can potentially become new and sustainable marshland ecosystems for the marine organisms uh, and, and enable them to survive. And the data that, uh, that we collect as the results of these studies is to be matched up with um, uh, the SLAM uh, from, from the SLAM project information uh, and determine what correlations there are to kind of okay, sort of uh, ground proof, um, you know, what, uh, what the SLAM model uh, projects. In the area that uh, we're doing our studies is. Um, um, I'm sure you all, all recognize uh, up in the Meadowlands area, of, uh, there's the little red line, uh, which uh, this is to give you an overview of the whole marsh complex. Next slide, please. Uh, there's that stretch where the transect goes out. Uh, and uh, this is this is um, a drone view of that whole site. What are the tasks? Um, you will need to lay out three transect lines. The middle line is for the vegetative and wildlife surveys. And then uh, the other two are the transects for the bird survey. One is to the east of the vegetative. So one is to, <coughs> me, one is to the east of the vegetative survey line, and one is to the west of the vegetative survey line. The first thing that we'll do is uh, be, begin with the bird surveys, um, and uh, at the end of the show here, I'll give kind of a time frame to show uh, when when we'll need to be starting. Um, once that has been completed. Then we'll move forward with the uh, aquatic sur uh, surveys and then with the uh, from quadrant sampling surveys and um, uh, the drone surveys. Um, uh, I've yet to determine whether they will be done on that day or perhaps later. Uh, discussions I had with Scott, he was saying that uh, uh, they may be doing when uh, more, of the, more, more of the plants are more fully out than they will be when, when we do this. So they give us a better but a reading on, on what that is. Next. <clears throat> Here's the equipment, the primary one, the uh, from tape measure, stakes, the quadrant sampling, the compass. Uh, but in addition to the compass, uh, this year we do have a uh, from a GPS unit which has a compass on it also, so we can even be a little more accurate. Next. <clears throat> Here is that GPS unit. And uh, this is uh, this is the chart that uh, Sharon made up. Uh, the only thing that we've um, we will add to it uh, even before Saturday is to impress at the top of the sheet that the bearing of the transect is, uh, is uh, 257 degrees. But this kind of gives you a layout of uh, where, the, where the key points are. And you'll notice there's the latitude and longitude. And um, if you can go back one slide, uh, Dennis, please. 
If you'll notice um, um, over the screen, it lists the uh, latitude and longitude there. So is, um, is uh, and uh, again, probably Sharon will be walking around uh, with the GPS and, uh, and establishing where those points are to verify that, um, uh, that those latitudes and longitudes are, are good. So, so when you're recording that information on your data sheets, um, that, that's what you'll have to refer to. It can be cross-referenced. Any questions on this one? Okay, next slide, please. Uh, this is setting up the uh, the transect line. Uh, involves putting the pin in the ground and then starting to stretch out and then measuring with a compass or the um, um, or the, uh, from the GPS uh, the direction that the tape measure has to go. And here it is being stretched out. This is not in the marsh. This is uh, actually in a in a ball field. It's not too far from where I live. <laughs> merely to demonstrate it. Uh, this is uh, showing the transect line itself and where the creek is, that's where the aquatic studies will be done. And then uh, from, from in the first 20 uh, from segments, um, we've broken it up into um, um, uh, the creek will be sector A and then minus two through 10 will be uh, from sector one, and then from 10 through 20 will be sector two. And then starting with 30 and running through 100, that will all make up sector three because uh, the, the quadrants at, at, at those points will be, you know, from, will be you know, um, the samples as you get farther and farther away from, uh, from the origin. And um, this is to demonstrate that um, it actually begins uh, down to, uh, from uh, going from the bottom of this, uh, the slide up, it go to that circle. That circle is where the first pin, where the, uh, the, the zero pin is. And then the first of the, uh, the quadrants to be sampled would be uh, from, you know, in the in line transect, the vegetative transect will be at uh, V00B. Zero, zero and, uh, and, and you'll notice the center point in each of these, uh, in each of these quadrants is always the 0.5 mark or the half meter mark uh, for each of the quadrants and the, that the measurement is taken in. So you need to keep that in mind. Uh, there will be no tape at this part, and so um, when you get out to the uh, the farther um, uh, the farther region, starting at uh, a thirty uh, um, thirty meters, you'll be doing each um, each um, each 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 quadrant at the even ten mark, and the center of the quadrant will be on the on the thirty mark line and the forty mark line, and so forth. So. That's where the transition takes place. Uh, here's the pin at the other end of the line at the 100 meter end. It's uh, up in the woods uh, underneath those trees that uh, showed up in the... Um, and this again is, uh, basically shows you that point um, where the line begins and then progresses up uh, behind the cattails and, and then the phragmites and uh, and so forth uh, up into the trees. Next. <clears throat> uh, when we first uh, get together in the barn, uh, we'll be setting up our our uh, from, uh, our teams, and uh, we'll have um, sign up sheets like these for uh, for each of the crews. Um, we're only doing uh, one transect line um, at the present time. So everything that we're doing is transect line number one. So when you fill in that box on the data sheets, 
transit line number for all of us is going to be one. So Janet, this is what your sheet's going to look like. Okay, Anna, if, um, if you'd uh, please uh, take a look at your, um, the, the printouts that I hope you have um, made. Uh, there's been a change and on uh, from, from uh, you'll notice on the on the circle uh, we're going in from uh, from uh, the zero meters uh, from is uh, from for the bird transect is equivalent to the hundred meter position of the vegetative survey. So um, the vegetative survey begins where the 100 meters is on, the, on, on, on this chart, but this chart is for the bird survey. So we start up in the wood, up in the, up in the, in the, in the, in the fields and near the woodlands, and then proceed south out to the zero mark of the vegetative line. And we're observing the birds uh, out to 100 meters on either side of the vegetative line. So that's why it's designated as um, is um, uh, east uh, east track and a west track and, and so forth. Next slide, please. Carl, could I just ask a question? Certainly. Can may I ask a question? Absolutely. Um, so uh, for the for the bird survey, is there just one team on one transect line? Is that what we're currently doing, or are there two teams? No, it's it, it's it's got to be two teams. Uh, if you go back one more slide, Dennis, please. Okay. Uh, for, there's gonna there's gonna be uh, for three people Doing on the east. eastern side. And three on the west. And three on the western side. Okay. That's why this sheet is uh, set up like that. Right. Okay. And, I misunderstood you. I thought I thought you said something about one one transect line. So there are two. Yeah. If, uh, there's one vegetative line. Right. But there are two uh, bird transect lines. Twenty meters on either side. Of the vegetative line. Right. That's correct. Yep. Okay. All right. Thank you. This is perfect. <laughs> and uh, from I'll, um, I'll explain something more here for a little bit uh, after after we go through this. Uh, well, I have okay. a question. Uh, I'm. On the bird transect line, if a bird flies in one of these sections on transit two and immediately goes over to one, you count it in both. You count them in both uh, areas. Uh, no, if if um, uh, you count it in your area, if you see it first, and if you notice that it goes across the line, do not, uh, you know, if, um, uh, if, uh, if, uh, the other group should not count it. Okay. I'll make one comment to that. If by chance you. you guys don't realize you're counting the same bird, um, then uh, I the time of day is where I'm going to be able to link everything together on the data sheet. So as long as you guys keep that time of day pretty accurate, um, I'll be able to figure out that you, possibly you guys saw the same bird. So, and maybe I'll call or double check or something like that. So that time of day when you record those birds is kind of crucial. And uh, think about Sharon, that. regarding the time of day, is that is that the minutes and seconds past the time we've started or is that an actual time on the clock? Time on the clock, time of day. Time, the, time, yeah. the actual time that it is on the clock. Yeah, look at your watch, re record the time, correct. Okay, okay, thank you. Yeah. This is exactly why we're doing this. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> That's what this is all about. <laughs> okay, uh, on the data sheet itself, <clears throat> um, It uh, gives a team number ID and, uh, and and so forth. And since there are two teams, each team is going to have their for, for their uh, their own sheet. So uh, you would have to indicate that it is uh, either a Western team or an Eastern team up in the, up in the ID. And at that point, 
Okay, Janet? Yes. Yep. Yep. And then uh, on the sheet, uh, uh, then the sector ID will be again, you know, whether it's east or west. Um, and then uh, the time of day, uh, Sharon just clarified. Uh, we do have uh, some new instruments to be able to measure the uh, the wind speed and the temperature. Uh, we have two of them, and I'll show those to you in uh, just a moment. Um, uh, in terms of the vector conditions, specimen. Um, most of the other stuff is uh, the same as it was last time, except for from uh, under from the count block there. The right hand column has been changed change to a uh, uh, to preening uh, from 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 what was uh, previously stated there. So that was a recommendation that uh, John made. Uh, so. Hey, Carl, Carl, just to clarify this, um, I was not recording the sheet when we did this last fall. The the transect vector point, where am I getting that information from? Mm -hmm. Okay, the transect vector point will be uh, from the series of stakes. Okay. The fly, flags that um, we'll be putting out and actually uh, Sharon and Nadia and maybe if, uh, another uh, two people will be putting those out on Wednesday. Uh, and I'll, I'll show you what they look like here in, 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 in just a moment. So each of those each of those flags will be labeled somehow. Yep. Uh, go ahead and show that uh, slide, that Dennis, please. Okay. Uh, from here's uh, here's the beginning of the uh, from on the uh, this is the east side marker, the stake. Next slide. Yep. That's the stake. That's still is there. that zero? Is that zero then? That would be zero on that on, on the on the east side. That's correct. Okay. Uh, this is going in that uh, in that same path, uh, in where that uh, little stick that is is, uh, is sticking up there. Yeah. Yeah. If, um, yep. Uh, that's where that uh, steep steep slope is going down, where there's there've been some sticks that have been laid in there to try and create some steps, but it's it's still a little bit, a little bit uh, hectic. So that's the that's the trail on the east side. Mm -hmm. Next slide, please. Uh, that's going further in that same trail. Oh, here's a stake. Okay. Yep. Next slide. Okay. This is uh, the west side stake. This would be the what well, the the zero mark uh, for the uh, west bird transect line. And if you look at the trees in the background, it kind of gives you an idea of, uh, of, of uh, you know, of, uh, where that where that path is going in because it kind of goes in and bends around to the right and then uh, goes out a little farther. Okay. Derek, do you have any questions? No. Nope. Just trying to okay. keep up. So sorry, I was unmuted. Yep. Uh, no, no, no. That's, <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> These are the stakes I mean, that I they're going to be putting in. I, I, yeah, sure. I, I was going to wait till the end, but since we paused anyway. Um, so do we need to clear any more vegetation or is that good? No, it's all, it's, in, okay. it's, uh, it's all good. We're going, going to, uh, with, uh, with what we've got. Uh, okay. As I say, Nadia and I were out there yesterday and, and, uh, and, and took a walk over you know, to, the, to the head of all of this. And, uh, nothing's grown up uh, to the point where it, uh, you know, it needs to be it needs to be cleared. Awesome. Yep. I would so think these, I would think Derek's but, disappointed. He had a really good time with that elect with all that <laughs> cutting last time. So yeah, yeah, darn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Sorry, Derek. <laughs> Carl, one, one more question. Um, have we? Have we uh, established how long we're staying at each stake? Ten minutes. Ten minutes. All right. Ten minutes. Okay. Yep. Yep. So these are the stakes that will be put in the ground uh, for 10, uh, 10, 10 meters apart. And as I say, Sharon and Nadia and I will be uh, putting them out on um, on Wednesday. So and. Uh, uh, 10, 20, 30, and then 40, 50, 60, all the way out to um, um, you know, 
100, except on the western side, they may not go that far unless um, I have um, purchased uh, two 12 foot, um, um, eight inch wide, uh, 12 foot long planks to be able to put over those creeks that are oh, there. Good. So we may be able to um, uh, ex extend the western, uh, the western uh, path out uh, uh, a little farther if we can get over that creek, so. Any questions on the stakes? Nope. Okay. Uh, upon uh, Sharon's recommendation, uh, we've purchased two of these, one for one for the west side, one for the east side. Sharon, you want to clue uh, people in as to operation of these? Yeah, actually, um, they're just, they're pretty simple to do. They, you turn on, the only trick you have to worry about you're holding that up into the air and it'll read uh, wind speed and temperature. I don't know, particularly on this um, uh, thing, but um, just make sure that you're holding it, you know, like perpendicular straight to the wind. Don't tilt it, the top, don't tilt it forward or backwards. That will give you kind of a skewed reading. Otherwise you just pull it up in the air and bring it back down and look at it. <laughs> and so, and Sharon, how often are we doing that? At every stop. Every stop, wow. Uh, yeah, if you, yeah, if you wanna make those notes, unless it doesn't change, you just, then you could just do little, you know, quote marks, but. And that's going, and that's going into this little box here on the sheet. Right. Okay. Yeah. In the third, third I think, column, yep. Yeah, I think last year we, you remembered we were out there for a little while and the wind did change. So, you know, it's kind of, so it was interesting to, to track that. So it did change a little bit, so, but that would be it. So these are, these are little uh, wind devices and they, I believe they also give you temperature yep. and a um, couple other things, but the real trick is hold them straight up. So okay. as you're doing it, so that's the only trick. I've got a quick question. I remember um, at the last, are we taking a range? You know, because the wind goes up and down as we're taking the meter, the meeting, reading. Yeah, more information is better than not. So, you know, always go to the back of the page if you want to make extra notes, because you never know. Yeah, uh, you know, the, more, the more we track, that'd be great. But Thanks. the range is, range is good too, yeah. Yeah, for physically, like for ease of interpretation after, for who's ever dealing with the data sheets, do you want just an average number, like one number per box, or do you want a range, like three oh, to five I see. Per um, do you know what I'm saying? Personally, I think that's your choice because probably what I'll do is I'll, I'll do it into an average. So you might as well do the average and then less work. <laughs> okay. Okay, great. Okay. Uh, okay, and the aquatic survey of, um, this is a big crew of, and got, uh, what I will mention here is of, um, uh, we've added in a, a photographer and an ID specialist, uh, and we'll talk more about that uh, later on. And then, of course, there's the the recorder uh, with uh, with their initials. And uh, uh, this is uh, this is the this is the uh, um, Susie has said she was willing, she'd be willing to you know be the team coordinator on this one. So. Uh, uh, Derek, could you share that with her when? Yeah, um, I was just about to chime in. That's a good point. Um, both uh, I talked briefly with Scott, Professor Graves, and Susie, who both couldn't be here. I hope I don't know if they told you or not. So anything you want to relay, just know, and I can help get it to them. Well, actually, yeah, uh, we're we're we're, uh, we're we're recording this program, and okay. when it's uh, when it's done, um, I'll have uh, email. I'll have. Uh, uh, from uh, Dennis, email you uh, the link and the access code, uh, the, 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 the passcode to be able to get to it, so that you know they 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 can run through the stuff um, uh, quickly. So sounds good. And they'll they will hear this discussion that's going on right now. So <laughs> watch out what you say. <laughs> there won't be a passcode. It'll just uh, be on you. Next, too. please. It'll just be uh, on YouTube. Oh, on YouTube? Oh, okay. The whole world, okay. <laughs> on YouTube? All right. <laughs> yeah, but it won't be publicized. It'll just be there. Right. 
Yep. Okay. Next slide. Uh, we've added some more equipment, uh, not shown in the picture here. Uh, it's an extendable pole that uh, it's actually a painting pole, which extends to about 20, uh, 18 feet. And I've got a pulley on the end of it so you can uh, uh, throw a bucket out and from way, way out into the water and, and, uh, and uh, you know, uh, drag it back in and collect the samples from, uh, from that. Um, there's also the uh, from the pl the, uh, the the plunger for uh, um, you know, uh, uh, setting it in the mud and then sucking it up and then uh, dumping the sample in the in the in the, uh, in the dish pan here and then uh, uh, getting things out you know getting things out with a smaller from uh, uh, the sieve or the jar or, or whatever so you look at it. Uh, more closely and put it under microscopes and so forth and take pictures. Next. Speaking of pictures, uh, this is our new camera. And uh, from, uh, we have a new person who is, uh, who is actually a very active um, um, board members of ours, uh, Robin and Delisir, who is, uh, uh, I've uh, asked to be our, uh, chief photographer and to organize all of the photographers uh, for each of the teams uh, to be able to take pictures with this. Uh, this camera, you can uh, take pictures to a depth of uh, uh, 50 feet deep in the water. So if uh, somebody should happen to go swimming, they can take pictures while they're there. That shouldn't be a problem for uh, this survey though no <laughs> well the other thing with uh, with the pole that pole also is serves as a uh, as a lifeguard pole uh in case uh you know somebody should happen to slip uh, you know they can uh, heave the line out and they can grab onto the line in fact uh, i'm thinking of uh, picking up a ring buoy at uh, one of the boat supply stores in, in brantford to be able to you know Attach on to the uh, from under the end of the rope to be able to heave it out and then pull somebody in. Carl, I have a question. Uh, on yep. the uh, one of the identification sheets, a photographer, then slash specialist ID, are, you a, are those the same person or they can be two different people? No, it's, uh, it could be, and then it, it, it should be the same. It should be the same, but it could, could be two different people. Okay. Uh, we do have uh, some wireless digital microscopes. Each group will have um, have one of these. Uh, Dennis is going to provide us with the protocols for um, actually connecting this microscope with a cell phone. So that then the pictures are actually taken on the cell phone and then we'll be, uh, be able to be uh, transferred to Sharon for her to uh, kind of create the in the files, which we'll talk more about in a little bit. And then uh, my main pitch on this one is uh, we are not keeping uh, uh, collections of the animals of and and, uh, and and the butterflies and so forth. So. All of our records about uh, the organisms that we find, whether they be plants, animals, or whatever, will be what we get on uh, cell phone pictures um, or the microscope and cell phone pictures or the other camera or the drone videos that we have. So, and there are standard operating procedures, which uh, we'll show you shortly. Next, please. Uh, this is the, the photography sheet and it lists the sampling process on lower left hand side there. Uh, the crew photographer and identification specialist uh, basically describes the duties and responsibilities and what needs to be done there, um, including 
uh, taken, uh, the picture should be taken of large, small size, uh, medium size, small spice uh, animals, burrows, nests, gnaw, gnawing on, on plants, galls, trails, and so forth. And it's all listed right there in terms of uh, the types of things that um, should be recorded. So there will, uh, uh, and then when you know when all when all is is done, then the people will have to uh, submit their uh, the photographs to Sharon. In the bottom right hand corner is her email address there to be able to accomplish that. Next slide, please. Uh, this is the data sheet, and. Uh, uh, the information at the top is pretty much the same as um, what's on the other sheets, except for uh, listing uh, the 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 uh, the, the, and the SS and the sector number, and then uh, the photo number sequence. In photo number sequence, there may be more, you know, <coughs> more than one picture taken of that sample. So that's why it's important that uh, the, that that is noted on on the sheet here, and then over on the right hand side, uh, all the boxes that are to be checked. Uh, those are the different categories as to, you know, whether it was alive, um, you know, whether there's a uh, um, photo was uh, was uh, uh, you know <clears throat> of a single sample and so forth. So, any questions on the photo sheet? Uh, hi, it's Diane. I think I see a typo. I'm not sure. Under the type of device, uh, does it say microphone on that sheet? Uh, instead, see, of uh, instead of microscope. Microscope. Huh? Oh, it does say microphone, right? <laughs> uh, just, yeah, just knows. Yep. Okay. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Thank you. That's why we're doing this. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that's uh, microscope and cell phone. <laughs> and that, that's what we, we put in there. MCP would be microphone and, uh, and cell phone. Microscope. It's good. We got three. Good. We got three pairs of eyes doing this. <laughs> <laughs> a whole lot more. <laughs> Uh, okay, next slide. Yep, okay. Um, this is pretty much the same uh, procedures that were listed on the sheet as last year, except that uh, um, uh, Sharon has put in uh, the specific code numbers for that for for the, for this particular organism. So when it comes uh, comes to the data sheet, you know you can uh, just uh, do that. When new uh, new organisms are indicated on the data sheet, then uh, a new uh, new uh, of code numbers will be will be assigned uh, to simplify that uh, for the for the next time around. So that will be a growing list as time goes on. So uh, any questions on anything shown here? All right, uh, here is the data sheet. Yeah, okay, on the data sheet. Again, the time of day, and uh, from you know whether the photo is taken, uh, what the number of the film, what the photo photo number is, and uh, while while she has listed in there from a JPEG number, which you know, if it comes off the camera, we would have that. If it's off the, off the cell phone. Um, we're mainly concerned about uh, getting the order of um, the photos, um, um, you know, on this sheet to match up with the order of the photos on the photo on the photo log. So they, they need to correspond. So that's um, you know where we have the same where we have the sample number. You know that may have um, you know a, a bunch of a bunch of numbers in there, you know, and I'll demonstrate that to you in another slide here shortly. I have a question. Yep. Diane, um, 
so if you take if you see multiple things in that one uh one tri one spot and you take multiple pictures how how do you want those logged in here do you want them written on the back if there's more than one or no, I'll, I'll, I'll show you i'll show you what to do there in the, in the slide that uh, comes up shortly okay great or no i, I don't have it in uh, i don't think i have it in the slideshow but i uh, <clears throat> Uh, it's in that uh, information that I emailed out to you this morning. There was a uh, there was a, a, a supplemental supplemental sheet. Okay. Uh, and I think it's on that. I'll be able to explain that in just a moment here. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Uh, from an, uh, when it comes to abundance. Up in the uh, up in the top here, we're actually count, counting the number of the organism of that type of organism that we see. So under code, you would put in either the number or the name of the organism, and then in the block underneath it, you would put in how many how many of those organisms you actually see, like uh, one or two or five or approximately a hundred uh, and that type of thing, that would be the number that will go in that box. So you're listing the names of each of the organisms across the top and then underneath it in the quadrant, you're telling, you know, what, uh, you know, many of that, uh, how many spiders you found, uh, you know, how many ticks you found, how many of uh, um, crabs you found uh, and so forth. Any questions? Okay, next slide, please. Uh, this is aquatic insects. These are the same procedures we had. Next slide. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Now this is uh, for the uh, for the quadrants and the uh, and the uh, and the uh, vegetative transect. Your research coordinator, which at this point is going to be Derek, right, Derek? Doesn't sound like I have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, have you uh, have you spoken to Luke recently? Um, no, do you need me to reach out to him? Uh, I was, um, I've been meaning to call him. Uh, I've been, um, if, if you would, I'd like you to give him, uh, have him give me a call back. Yep. Gotcha. I'll try to so reach would, out. I, I, would, I, know, I know he's not going to be able to be with us because he's experiencing some health issues, but uh, no, um, I told him I would uh, you know, keep him plugged in on, on all of this stuff. So, okay. I hope everything's okay with him. Yep. Okay, and the quadrant survey crew. Uh, these are the, and these are the positions. And again, there's the photographer identification specialist. And as Scott has pointed out, that could be two people. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this is the. Uh, the SOP, so top, um, top is the, the Marsh Edge SO and the Standard Operating Procedures, which basically gives you the procedures for laying out the uh, from, uh, the transect, the vegetative transect line, and basically reiterates what I've, what I've already explained. Um, in, the, in the last uh, three sentences, um, also two survey plans plots in the direction of the marsh with plot centered on 0 0.5 meters and my, or minus 0 0.5 and minus 1.5 meters. So from, um, uh, from in the other direction, and I'll be able to show you that, uh, uh, that process later on. Okay, and here we are with uh, the, the, the codes. And then, you know, if, um, there's this other box that is not coded 
which uh, Sharon would be able to you know, uh, put into based on what's shown on the data sheet uh, later on. Any questions on this one? Okay, next slide, please. All right. Uh, we've taken and divided the transect line up into 32 sectors. And this is starts with minus two, which is, um, you know, um, of, um, towards the water from where that pin is put in. And uh, we'll show you how to do that. But where it talks about abundance here, You'll note in the remarks at the top that we're recording abundance in terms of percentages. Uh, the animals, we're counting the individual organisms. Here, we're talking at um, percentage of distribution of the plants in the quadrant. And uh, let's see. Uh, from, I'll, I'll get to that shortly, but over on the right hand side here, you'll notice there is a new column that was added this year, total vegetation cost and bare ground. That's where you give the ratio of how much of the, um, how much of the area was covered in percent by the plant and how much bare ground is actually, you know, of, um, shown you know in between the plants and that needs to add up to 100 percent and i'll explain the uh, the the abundance relationship there okay uh, uh this is just cycling through the this is still you know in the first sector but the information is the same the abundance the sample number the pictures taken, and uh, in that other sheet that I sent out, uh, uh, it describes that that uh, this could be, you know, a, a whole series of pictures that are taken, but it needs to be the the specific number of picture and the specific specific number of the picture of that organism of that sample. Are we all okay on that? So let's say it's sample one and we take pictures one, two, and three. One, two, and three would go in that box so that they can relate this information or Sharon can relate this information to the photography log that's, uh, that's going to be linked with it. And this is going through the that then through the uh, through the remaining sectors of uh, 30, 40, and so forth. Next slide, please. <clears throat> Guidelines for assessment and recording of vegetation and population density. It's one to ten percent. It's a code one. Is it indicated at the top if it is present? You put a one in the box. If that if that plant is not present, you put a zero, <clears throat> so that when you write the code, it would be a one to indicate that the plant is present, and that it is one to ten percent of the vegetation in that quadrant is that type of plant, and is indicated on the right hand side. If, uh, if that type of plant goes uh, can, uh, made uh, from 40%, the code would be a 1-04, 80%, 1-0, 0-4, and so forth. Any questions on this? Can I just make a comment, Carl? Sure. Yeah, so I just wanted to tell everybody, um, well, one is, I totally totally struggled with this form 
more because we're getting more information than, you know, will fit on an eight by 11 piece of paper. So if all else, just tell your team members, you know, write notes on the back. All right. There's not, you know, you don't, we tried to squeeze it all into that sheet. And I'm a little concerned that some of the data is going to be more than that little cell can hold. So just please be aware that more information on the back or use a second page or whatever you want to do. Don't worry about it. We just want the data, you know, so go ahead and waste paper. <laughs> You're not wasting it. <laughs> You're putting it into very productive use. <laughs> yep. Okay. Can I, can I request, like, suggest, it might be nice just to throw a line, like print out some blank lines for a note sheet to leave with each team's stack, you know, oh. to keep. Fabulous. You're right. Yes. Yep. Just like an extra page or two. Good idea. And then they can, uh, from, and have on the sheet, uh, you know, uh, a, a reference page that would connect that to the uh, to their uh, to their sector. Okay, uh, this is again uh, the key issue here is uh, um, the the latitude and longitude, which is showed on the screen. Uh, uh, next slide, please. Um, before I go to this, I just want to mention on the if um, on the sheet which I mailed out to you or emailed out to you earlier today. Um, <clears throat> uh, um, just to give you an example, back on that other data sheet. Uh, the name of the plant, the first name of the plant, um, you might write in uh, black grass. Under abundance, you'd put in a 1-04. And under pictures, you'd put in 1, 2, 3. And that would be sample number one. Uh, the next block might be salt grass. Uh, the abundance would be 1-02 because salt grass was 2% of, of from there are 20% of that block. Uh, it would be sample number two. And uh, the picture that was taken was the fourth picture. So it would be number four. Uh, the next block would be uh, salt marsh cord grass. The abundance would be 1 hyphen 02 for 20 percent. So if you add all of those percentages up, the 4 percent and the 40 percent, the 20 percent and the 20 percent, what is the total amount of vegetative coverage at this point? Answer. I wasn't, I'm sorry. I like you got about 80% plus some other no, unknown. That's correct. Okay. So the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the unknown, uh, if you have 80% eight, 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 is the vegetative covered in the bare ground, would be a two, a code two for 20%. So those two, those two last numbers okay. have to add up to 100%. I have a question about the system for data collection here. Is in my head, if I was doing this for the sake of efficiency, I wouldn't worry about, you know, why are we bothering to note that it's present, you know, any percentage would mean that the, the vegetation is present. I feel like we could get rid of, you know, an extra digit or some, just focus on what the percent is. 
Does that make sense? Did that make sense? Yeah, I understand what you're saying, but uh, when it comes to the the the, 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 the is there is there any like after you know who's ever processing the data? Do they need what's that? What's the purpose of that? Well, this is this originally comes from the uh, original process mm -hmm. that was uh, established by uh, Chris Elpick and uh, and Chris Fields. Okay. Uh, on the data sheet is representing it as a one, the actual percent or or zero. Uh, we are adding in. The, the, the percent the percentage value to it so if it is present that uh, you know um it's a holdover thoughts, from when, uh, when, you were, when they were just recording present or not present presence or absence right? right i mean i struggled with that as well derek actually i was kind of like well stating the obvious would put be putting the 60 percent in it's truly up to you guys. It's it's going to end up being a 106 or a 107 because we've started with that protocol. Mm -hmm. That's the only particular reason. Otherwise, if somebody puts 70 in there, I don't care. I know it's going to be a 107. So it's up to you guys, really, honestly. You know, it's more of a, but I hear you because it seems it's, it's a little hard to describe the process. Otherwise, we could just say, write in 70%, 30%, 10%, and bear, you know? So that's up to you guys, completely. I would, I just want to emphasize, I think that's that would be my vote for sure. I think for the sake of making it as simple as possible for the people on the, you know, at the, on the field site, um, I feel like that's worth the exchange and, you know, deal with that processing later upon data entry and make it simpler for the people in the field. That's my vote. Okay, especially, so, if, we, especially so, if we're bringing kids from from Southern who are new to data collection, you know, I think the simpler the better. So if it's forty percent, just put a four. If it's a twenty percent, just a two. So I think we're ending just, up with those uh, with those as, as as single digits to make things simpler. I think so. Yeah, or even just write forty percent. You know, I I feel like that's intuitive enough. I think, but that's again, that's just my. My perspective. I understand what you're saying, but I'm I'm just trying to cut down on the amount of writing that we have to do without, uh, you know, putting on uh, putting on a zero in each time. Yeah, that sounds good. So just using I like four it. for forty percent and two for twenty percent and so forth. So yeah, okay. I don't mean to make you no. modify data sheets <laughs> last minute, but no, that's uh, uh that's why. That's why we're having this, and you know we're looking for this. Or we're looking for this discussion, so that Sharon can make these changes and and and, and, and simplify it for, uh, you know, for, for for when we do it. We'll we'll just mention those changes when we you know when we, when we meet on Saturday. And I'll, um, I'll we'll change we'll change that uh, uh, that other sheet. That uh, could you back up um, one or two slides, Dennis, please. The one that has the, uh, could you back it back it up to the sheet that uh, shows the uh, the guidelines for assessment and recording? Uh, there, yep, that's good. Okay. So we would. I see. We would just change. You know, we we just change the de data entry code to a one or a two or a three or a four or so forth rather than the even the zero. Excuse me, I have a question on that. Uh, if you could clarify. So for instance, say you have a quadrat that is half salt grass and half black grass, and that covers the whole quadrat. So you would do basically 50% of one, 50% of another, and the total would be 100%? Correct. That's, but say you just have, um, it's, still fifth, it's still half black grass and half salt grass, but it only covers um, half of the 
quadrat and half of it is bare. How would you code that? Uh, 2.5 of each and then uh, five for the other one. Yeah, okay. five, five for the bear. Yeah, so it'd be a 0.25 in okay. each. And then uh, the bear, the very last column would be the 0.5 or the five. Great. Super, yeah. okay, so, it, so it's the total, total of the whole versus this is half percent of the species. It's 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 twenty five percent of the space on that quadrat. Okay, thank you. For the for, for the for the last two for the last two columns. Yep, yep. Okay, uh, a ruler is being provided because uh, in some places, uh, especially with. Um, um, uh, it mentions on the other on the other uh, vegetative sheet uh, measuring of uh, Hilva. Um, that has to be measured to a specific centimeters, but that's kind of an upland shrub. But uh, you'll also notice uh, there that there's a question of uh, saplings or seedlings. Um, if you could indicate, uh, if you know how high those are uh, in the appropriate space on on, on the vegetative uh, line transect. Uh, you've got this ruler to measure with, so we've got four of them. They're in the kit. Um, one of the other uh, reasons for the ruler is if you do have a sample or a specimen that the photographer is making a photo of, having that ruler as a measurement next to the specimen as part of the photo is uh, beneficial as well. Good idea. Okay, uh, this is the 100, uh, 100 meter marker pin in the upland section. And you'll notice to the left there, there's a big tree there, which actually has a couple of trunks to it. And then there are some more trees to the left and some more trees to the right and so forth. Um, this is where the, um, uh, the next uh, um, uh, um, section comes in and talking about uh, you know the, the the trees and what's happening to their uh, to, to their canopy and so forth. But um, going back to the um, actually the labeling here is is not correct. Uh, uh, that. Uh, uh, group A, uh, group A should actually be doing the creek, and then sector one would be group A, sector two would be group B, and sector three would be uh, uh, the next range out. So, uh, And this is what, uh, yep. <clears throat> okay, this is uh, kind of setting out, beginning with the pin and rolling this frame out to minus two. That's how you would get uh, from uh, the quadrant for V zero zero B. So you start with uh, the, the uh, the, the edge of the frame against pin uh, the, the pin and roll it uh, twice to get it out to, uh, to, 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 the, to this point. So next slide, please. Okay. Then you've, uh, from, when you uh, go on the other side, uh, you start at the pin and Point of um, point 0.5 meter will be in the middle of the frame, and then you roll the frame, roll the frame again, and that gives you um, the second quadrant and, and so forth. So, and that's the way the way, the way you move it the whole the whole length. So, okay, uh, this is the same as it was last time. 
Uh, I did put in some aspirators this time, but I'm going to also be uh, putting in some straws that you can uh, put into the aspirators and also some, uh, from, uh, some alcohol wipes, be able to wipe everything, uh, everything down also. Um, if, uh, you know, if the opportunity does come to use them at uh, sectors one, two, or three, so. And this is basically sector three, the high marsh. Next slide, please. As I said earlier, original plan was to capture and preserve organisms. However, due to lack of storage space, uh, we're going to be using the cameras, cell phones, or the microscope slash cell phone combination. Next slide. <clears throat> this is the protocols for the sector three group which is dealing with, uh, with uh, trees and uh, um, there's a wide range of things here that, uh, uh, that you need to, need to do. You'll notice at the bottom, the photo taken. Uh, we're also going to have to talk to uh, from, uh, both uh, from Scott and uh, Patrick is um, getting the getting to fly over with the drones uh, to be add those videos to get a better idea of, um, you know, what the, what the health of the tree is uh, over the life of this uh, project. So it's gonna be a strong indicator of um, what's happening. And this is the data sheet that goes along with it. And this is by tree. And you'll notice there's a tag number and I've got a picture of the tags uh, that will be put on, put on the trees. Um, this is the tree that, um, that it would go on. And uh, these, these, these are the tags that we have to actually attach to the trees uh, uh, this time we go out, so. And uh, Heather is going to be in charge of that group again, so uh, she will take care of that. What I do have to do is get some hammer and nails to attach. <laughs> <clears throat> Um, as I say, we do have uh, actually two drones. This is uh, the drone um, from protocols. It was uh, actually written up by uh, um, uh, by Scott uh, Scott Graves from Southern, and we're uh, we're basically using his um, um, his uh, his drone and Patrick's drone in coordination. Because what we're going to do is get um, these are uh, um, this is the new drone that Patrick has just purchased. Uh, we're waiting to get uh, Scott's uh, picture to replace the picture that's in there here now. So we'll be done the information uh, field data sheets, paper sheets will be stored in files in the plastic storage box, which uh, Sharon has. And then the information will be taken from there and transferred onto the computer program, which she's developed. And uh, we'll be following basically the, the same format that uh, um, was uh, created the first time around, which uh, that particular information, next slide, please. Um, that information, has been shared with uh, Kevin McGee, who is the uh, from environmental planner for the for the town of Guilford, and that information now sits on in the resources file on the town's computer uh, and so forth. And uh, uh, we don't. Is there a way that we're going to be able to transfer the pictures into that? Uh, do you think, Sharon and Dennis? I'd have to see the system, um, but I, I thought, well, no, not that I know of at the moment. I'd have to see the system. Um, okay. I just got a, actually an email that, um, actually Lucy might know a little bit about this too. 
I just got an email from Smithsonian and they are using Flickr for their biodiversity library, which has, I guess, 300,000 photos or something in it, which means there's a commitment to using Flickr. So I was kind of like, oh, well, Smithsonian can use it, so can we. But anyways, we can we can talk about that in the background there too. Okay. Well, yep. For photo <laughs> story, yeah. Hey, this is interesting. <laughs> you never, never can tell what pops up. Okay. <laughs> Every minute is a new living experience, <laughs> a new educational experience. <laughs> yep. Uh, references uh, from these you could go to to get a feel for, you know, from what this program is all about and why we are doing it and and, and contributions. So. Next slide, please. Fire away. Once the once the town has the data, is it publicly available? That is correct. That's good. That's why we're putting it on the, on the town's computer. So not only uh, townspeople and town commissions and so forth. But also uh, regional planning agencies uh, would have access to it. A DEP will have access to it, uh, and, and so forth. So uh, that that allows this information to be uh, shared with organizations and agencies that uh, need to know it. And you know, like the uh, the uh, conservation commissions and uh, planning and zoning commission. You know, all those people need to have access to this. So. Carl, the, the idea is to give this information biennially because it's, it's, a, it's a spring and a fall survey. And this continues on to the year 2020 uh, till 2100. Is that correct? So our, 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 our progeny will be taking over this and, and feeding this information. So we'll see it going over this uh, so 80 year period of time. Is that correct? That's the idea. That's why I'm. That's why I'm recruiting people like Derek and so forth. <laughs> Younger bloods, right? Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Derek, for being part of it. <laughs> You're le le leading the band, so to speak. <laughs> Carl, Carl um, I'd like to know the names of the people who will be participating in the bird survey. John's not here. I know. Do uh, we know? Do we know specific people? <clears throat> Uh, I don't have confirmations yet, but uh, hopefully I'm, I'm going to reach out to them again and uh, please let them, you know, let me know. The, uh, plus, uh, you know, we, have, uh, we are ordering lunches for, uh, from, uh, for everybody. Uh, and, you know, so I need to know what the, what that, uh, you know, from, uh, you know, what, what they want. And I've got to call that order in by uh, from, by Wednesday the 28th. So I need a commitment uh, like over the over the next few days. So for those of us that are here, I'll let you know the choices now. Uh, it's either a veggie uh, veggie a veggie sub, tuna sub, or a turkey sub. Those are the those are the three choices. So okay. if you will email me your your choice, so. Uh, compile my okay. list and and additionally um the the date that we're aiming for for the bird survey is saturday may 1st saturday may 1st you will you will you will we will start with the bird survey which i expect will take about an hour yeah and then that'll give us time to get all the uh, all the rest of the stuff in place so that uh we, you know we'll be able to uh, then have um, the other people move out and, 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 and man their station, so to speak. Okay, and, and are we, we're observing the tide uh, for that day so we know when we can get in there, correct? Yep, uh, it's uh, um, basically uh, for, uh, low tide is around 11.30 on that day, so. That, that's dead low, okay, so, yep. all right. So it'll be late, late morning that we're that's there. Why we're, uh, that's uh, well, I, 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 got a, I got a time schedule later, later on here, but uh, okay. uh, you know, we can, we can go over that. But any other questions on the data sheets uh, or the uh, protocols? I have a, I have a 
friend of mine who is an excellent bird idea. I don't want to adapt him yet, but because uh, I haven't asked him, but uh, you know, to spend one hour to helping in this project, it might be good. Um, so it's going to be roughly uh, 11 o'clock for one hour, Saturday, May 1st. Is that correct? No, 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 no. We have, uh, we have, uh, 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 go ahead and uh, run through Dennis to the, uh, the, the schedule of events. Here we go, okay. schedule of events. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Perfect segue, Scott. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Ask and you shall receive. <laughs> Eight thirty, uh, we meet at the barn. Uh, you know, sign is uh, get the people to fill out the assignment sheet so we know who's doing what. Uh, Nine o'clock, um, pick up all the stuff, and uh, begin to move down. Um, of course, um, that's going to take a while, but. Uh, the bird uh, survey people don't have uh, very much to bring with them, so they can hustle on down, and get their survey going. Uh, so, so that by 10:15 uh, we can start the, uh, the transect and the line transect stuff. So uh, your friend that you're going to ask to help with the birding should should be there at about 8:30. Okay. And uh, we'll be wrapping up by, you know, probably about uh, 10, 15, 10, 30, so. Good, okay. Yep. We break for lunch and then hopefully by uh, 3.15, we're done with the field work and can bring stuff back to the barn and uh, so, so, so sort that out. Um, what I do have is I picked up, uh, uh, <clears throat> it'll be for five, small folding tables that are basically two foot by four foot uh, to be able to set stuff on. Uh, <clears throat> uh, then those will be going out. Um, we have the microscopes and I've uh, obtained uh, from four boxes, which kind of have uh, lifting covers uh, that uh, we can stick the microscope and the cell phone inside the box uh, so that uh, you don't have the uh, concern about uh, reflection of the sun and, and, and so forth to be able to uh, take those pictures with. So, <clears throat> uh, any other questions? I presume masks for all. Absolutely. Next slide, please. <clears throat> <laughs> Thank you for becoming a participant. Looking forward to seeing you at the barn at 8.45. Please wear your mask and keep safe distance away from other field researchers. That's why we set up small groups. Uh, Dennis is highlighting the barn down in the lower section there where of course everybody that's here knows where that is, but uh, for the new people, you know, if, um, that'll have to be pointed out to them. So uh, Derek, if you could share that uh, with us, uh, you know, with, with Susie and so forth when, uh, when I get to view this. Um, uh, if you've not done so, please place your order by uh, sending me an email to the address in the email address at the bottom of the screen here. And if you don't have it, uh, please note it at this time. Uh, I'm also going to give you my cell phone number. And that would be 203. Five three zero eight two three two. That's two zero three five three zero eight two three two. And if you could put that in your cell phone so that we're out in the fields, you need to reach me. Uh, or even, you know. Uh, when you're coming down to the program or, if, you know, if you're not able to make it or something, uh, emergency <coughs> contact, you'll have it to have it handy. So I would appreciate that very much. Any other questions? Uh, do, are you, uh, um, no volunteers. Do we need? Do you need me to try and spread the word, or do you think we're set? Yes, please. 
No, no. Uh, if you'd spread the word, uh, I would appreciate it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> there are a bunch of people I haven't heard back from, even though we got uh, quite a long list. Uh, <clears throat> I will email you the list of what I have. Um, it's, a, it's a spreadsheet, so you've got uh, so we got uh, contact phone numbers and uh, and, and so forth. So, uh, from Janet, yeah, uh, you will be able to you would also Janet, you'd be able to reach out to uh, the people. Uh, uh, of course, we have Lucy here today, but uh, from you know there were some other people that uh, that aren't here today that we should probably reach out to. So. Any other questions? Um, can we go? Can you go back to? Um, I think Diane had kind of touched on this: um, the wildlife insect data sheet. Yep. So, where are we? It looks like there's only one row per. Wow. So how are you, how are we cramming in multiple species per plot? Across the top there, of, okay, it says uh, plot, distance, so on and so forth. You got that yeah. row. E each separate organism is being plotted and written in there. The first time it's found, it gets written in there. It's the, it's the cell that has the word code. I can, yeah, I can change the title on that if that's confusing to you. But that that would be that code is on the uh, SOP. You'd write in that it's a fiddler crab, or you'd write the code, mm -hmm. and then you would document whether you found it, which plot you found it to. So it goes from code mm -hmm. down. Does that work? I think I see what you're talking about. So each column is a separate yeah that 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 organism so if it's a if the first thing you find is a fiddler crab if you write in the first box in the empty code box fiddler crab and then in the box underneath mm -hmm. it you put in how many of those fiddler crabs you found and then you move on to the next quadrant and then you uh, how many fiddler crabs you found in in the, in the next quadrant and so forth. So that first in that first column would be all fiddler crabs. The next code might be, uh, for, you know, mm -hmm. some, some um, you know, a, a marsh spider. Uh, uh, in that one, uh, for, you know, you might not find a marsh spider until, you know, for, for, from the, 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 the two meter, two meter segment. Uh, so, okay, that makes more sense. It didn't, I think it wasn't that just for perspective and feedback, like that wasn't clear to me initially looking at it, but I get what you're saying. Yep. So we explain it to everyone. So though for Sharon, now you're going to have to look at, you're just going to get a little list of photo IDs over there and you're going to have to just on your end associate it with the species. Yeah? That's correct. That's why that's, that's where the photo numbers are, are listed in the uh, uh, to the left there. Yeah, but I'm just thinking, like, say you had four different species in one plot, she's just going to have to know which is which. That's all. It's a little little detail, but it's, we it's doable. Yeah, no, it's an important detail that we've kind of been struggling with because mm -hmm. you know if you're sitting there with an electronic camera, you can take thirty shots, you know, in three seconds. So. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, we are struggling with that a little bit. Um, basically, um, I think in working with the photo person, and then, like I said, just, you know, say if, if photo ID and there's five photos for the fiddler crab, just put C back, you know, and, and write it, write the details on the back. Cause not every, every one of those cells is going to have, you know, a specimen with a photo. But I know it's the problem is we've got these small sheets. <laughs> so, I mean, if you guys can think of a way. I 
it's kind of like star trek chess you know three-dimensional here I, so I might, if i have time bef not before the, but maybe like for the next for next year i may like play with formatting and see if i can switch it and make it easy you know I'll, yeah i don't know if i'll have time to do that before this weekend but yeah you know, mess yeah. Anything up. maybe we should do the same thing with a wildlife sheet that we're doing with the uh, phone, with the register sheet and uh, break, break it up into a, a separate sheet for each sector. I think I like that one better. If, again, this is all me just giving feedback. You don't have to, like, I'm just- No, no this keep is- it coming. Let's Keep it coming, that's think, what this is all about. And I'm trying to, what I'm doing is trying to put myself in the shoes of someone who's never done this before, is just trying to, because we don't want inaccurate data, you know, like that's worse than, that throws everything off. So, you know, I think that the vegetation one might just be more intuitive for someone to pick up and and not cause confusion with numbers in the wrong spot, if that makes sense. So the, use the vegetation format for the wildlife as well. That's easy peasy. Exactly, yeah, yeah. exactly. Okay. Yeah. It, I mean, what does everyone else think though? I don't wanna just make, you know, I don't wanna be the only one making changes. Um, could you show the vegetation uh, data sheet again so we could compare them? Yep. Which way, Carl? Uh, vegetation is uh, advancing. Uh, here it is, open, open. Mm -hmm. Oh, I got it. Next slide. I see. Do you see what we're talking about, Diane, how it's kind of broken yeah, up differently? Um, so where do you, oh, okay, yeah. And then you have the picture number right under that individual species. Correct. Right. Rather than yeah. if you had four species on the other one that had, you took one picture of each of four species, then how do you know which one you took a picture of? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, it, it's by sample number. No, but I mean on the uh, on the wildlife one, on the wildlife example, there wasn't a place to say under like the um, marsh spider that you took a picture of the marsh spider. It was just, um, you know what I mean? Like uh, where it says photo ID, if you took four pictures of, if you took a picture of a spider and a tick and a crab, um under photo id you'd have to put one two three correct but you wouldn't know which which was which or um you know as derek said you wouldn't you wouldn't be able to associate yep. the picture with the species yep it's better we format it uh, like like uh like this sheet yep I'm halfway getting it done already, sorry. <laughs> I just have a quick question. This is Lucy. Um, I'm yep. hoping to help out with the with birding. Um, so are we concerned about weather at all? I'm assuming we'll do it rain or shine, um, but I don't see any. No, no, we've got uh, um, uh, May, May, uh, the, the primary date is May 1st and uh, May 8th would be the rain date. May eighth is a rain date. May eighth okay. is a rain date. Yep. No, yes, I've been I watching the forecast any... right now. They're saying there's a forty percent chance we may have rain on uh, yes. on that next Saturday. So. Shower showers in the morning. I see. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you're looking for a clear, um, a clear day, basically. Yep. Otherwise, how do you uh, make that decision? Uh, from well, I will have to. I'll have to let everybody know on from on Friday. On Friday. Yeah, because I see nothing on any of these data sheets. Weather, um, you know, observations of the weather, whether or not that's an issue, or whether that's something you want to record. But well, that's on that that's on the bird survey sheet. It is okay. Yeah. I didn't see it. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that was just my question. So, Good if, question, Lucy. Keep keep them coming. <laughs> thank you. More, 
the more mines we have, uh, the better we can sort this stuff out. So well, the the weather thing here shows Nick on the first uh, thirty five percent chance of rain. High temperature is sixty. I don't know how accurate that is, yeah. but it's going to be raining really from Thursday off and on all the way through Sunday. Uh, but thirty five percent chance, you know, that might be a different thirty five percent chance than it is over the East River Marsh. Right. <laughs> So well, the birders might be able to cut, uh, count a lot of ducks. <laughs> yep. Don't don't ducks like the what the rain? Anyways, <laughs> uh, the, the, doing doing it in the rain would be uh, uh, would be miserable. So. Well, okay. we're reaching out another week or so that it says Saturday the 8th is 45% chance of rain. <laughs> <laughs> so Thanks, Scott. <laughs> I, I'm not a weather forecaster, and I don't know how accurate these things are, but, uh, yep. uh, you know, so maybe we're better off with 35% chance and then 45%. Right, yep. Should we add a third day as a backup? Uh, that's a possibility. So that would make it uh, uh, calendar. Oops. Uh, no, I don't want all those dates. Uh, okay. That would make it May 15th. That's fifteenth an option. Yeah, it is for me. Yes, that works for me. Okay. So I'll put on I'll put out primary dates, uh, the first, secondary, eighth, and if uh, that doesn't work, the fifteenth. Very good. All right. I'm going to, uh, I need to get moving, I think. Yep. Um, very good. It's good to see you. Thank Carl. you very much. Appreciate everybody's participation. This went very well. Thank you. Thanks, Carl. You well. Take good care. Thank you. Stay safe and healthy.